Gloria Greer was born Albert Eleanor Greer, peculiarly named after her father, in Muskegee, Oklahoma on March 7, 1908. When Gloria was only three years old, the family moved to Ashland in Oregon, where her father, Albert Sr., bought the local newspaper, the Ashland Daily Tidings. Gloria desperately wanted to become a movie actress, and after finishing her studies at the University of Oregon in 1927, she moved to Los Angeles, which by now had become arguably the movie capital of the world. She decided to give herself the professional name Gloria Greer, and was picked by Hal Roach Studios in 1928, becoming one of Hal Roach's bathing beauties. They made appearances in several short films and were used in publicity photo shoots and personal appearances for the studio. In 1929, Gloria Greer landed a role in the Laurel and Hardy short Men of War, in which she played Oliver Hardy's focus of affection. Although her role was secondary to Anne Cornwall's, and in fact she was not even credited, she does have several lines of dialogue. Men of War is about two sailors on leave, played by Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy, who pick up two girls in a park, one brunette and one blonde. They go to a shop to buy a soda from longtime Laurel and Hardy collaborator James Finlayson, but Stan and Ollie discover they don't have enough money for four sodas. So the comedy ensues where Ollie encourages Stan to refuse to have a soda so they can afford to impress the girls. And of course, Stan forgets. I'm only putting it on for the girls. This is a sketch that was first used in the silent short Should Married Men Go Home in 1928. Later in this comedy short, the four of them take to the water in a rowing boat for a leisurely trip that is far from leisurely. And it all ends in a brawl with the other boaters on the lake. Gloria has plenty of screen time but little to do, with the occasional line of dialogue and a few giggles and squeaks. Gloria shares a screen with both Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy, with the occasional close-up showing us her illuminating smile. We even see her without her hat, revealing her short blonde hair that was the style of the day. This really was a starting point for Gloria Greer, and her career should have developed from there, but for the unforeseen event that was to cut short her career and her life. Gloria's other known screen appearance was in the 1930 June Clyde and Henry Armetta film Moonlight and Monkey Business. Again, Gloria was uncredited, and it appears that this film is either lost or in a private collection never to be seen. Although there are rumours and speculation, not least from her family, that Gloria appeared in more shorts and feature films, no evidence has yet been found. In 1930, Gloria married Carlos Noel. Gloria's mother, Lillian, had been staying in Burbank, California, at the home of her daughter, Vivian, and her husband, Mr. Harvey Ling, for a few months when Gloria became pregnant. The family were thrilled, and so Gloria, her husband, and her mother decided to move back to Ashland in Oregon to have the baby with the intention of residing in the area and setting up home for their new family. Gloria's sister, also called Lillian, already lived in Ashland with her husband, Mr. Schofield. It was an idyllic plan, and everyone was happy, but things would not go as well as they had hoped, and happiness would be followed by tragedy before too long. After sampling a taste of the movie world, seeing both sides of the business firsthand, whether Gloria Greer's intention was to return to acting in films is unclear. So many young actresses of the time married and chose to retire from show business altogether, often to bring up a family, especially if their husbands were able to support the family in a job that all too often paid more than that of any female employee. After all, the movie business was not always as glamorous as it appears to the public, and the work for a young, beautiful actress could disappear as quickly as it appeared when the next beautiful face was discovered. However, the Greer family were fairly well off. Indeed, Mrs Greer had inherited the ownership of the local newspaper after her husband's death in 1926, and so setting up again in the town where Gloria grew up wasn't such of an ordeal. The family had friends and connections in the area, finding work wouldn't be so hard for them, even during the depression of the 1930s. Everything was looking great for Gloria. New husband, baby imminent, and the future seemed bright. On the 28th of May, the baby was born, 
a beautiful boy called Carlos Noel Jr. Within 24 hours, however, it was clear that there was a problem. Not with the baby, but with Gloria. She came down with a fever and was bedridden with pain. The doctor frantically tried all he could to make her well again, but her body was shutting down. It was soon realised that Gloria had sepsis, and in the early 1930s the mortality rate of sufferers were high. The doctor knew there was little he could do but wait and hope and pray for a miracle that never came. Gloria's sister Vivian drove with her husband from Burbank, a journey of 18 hours, when she heard how sick Gloria was, and arrived on the evening of the 5th of June. Gloria Greer died in her bed on the 6th of June 1931, aged just 23. She left us just a glimpse of what could have been in the film Men of War, appearing with two of the most famous men in the world of film comedy, Laurel and Hardy. Gloria's body was interred at Grandview Memorial Park in Glendale, Los Angeles County, California. <laughs>